Okay, so this was a question. Uh, even though I've glimpsed at the infinite or been in the infinite, why do I still choose hardship and the world? So uh, quite a lot of spiritual seekers have been in that timeless presence, the, in, the, uh, um, the infinite presence, whatever words you want to use it, where there's no thoughts and the stunningness of reality reveals itself as to being exquisitely beautiful. And it's a disappearance of the idea that an individual me even exists beyond that. So uh, many of us spiritual seekers have been there, and yet we go back to being stuck in a thought, back to being stuck in the body, back to being stuck in feelings or emotional dramas or relationship dramas. And there's the loss of that, that uh, you know, uh, is sometimes called the beloved, the holy presence, the holy instant, enlightenment, satori, whatever you want to call it. Um, so, well, you know, uh, I like what Hawkins said. This is a world of purgatory where we get to transcend all the limiting thoughts and ideas and all our karma, if you like, all our baggage until we return back to that infinite state. Or as Buddha said, um, as long as you have any attachment, whether it be a thought, a feeling, a body, a relationship, an idea, uh, you'll continue to um, suffer in this world, suffer old age, th thoughts, all kinds of things. Suffering is inevitable while you have any attachments that you hold on to. Once you're free of all attachments, then that's the one place where you will be free and happy forever, the enlightened state. So, so what's the reason? Well, Buddha would say, well, you still have some attachments you haven't let go of. And Hawkins would say, yeah, there's still some dualities or positionalities um, that you're holding on to, or some, some heavy karmic, uh, I, I like Hawkins experience, uh, some people don't like it, you can ignore it, karma, like there's some stuff which has got heavy baggage, some family relationships with heavy baggage, some traumas, whatever you want to call them, where there is a lot of repressed feelings, and those thoughts and belief systems, negative belief systems are held with ferocity, and so even though you may start doing spiritual work, and you might go to satsang or, or join a Course in Miracles group or whatever, and then suddenly have that feeling of that infinite timeless presence and joy. You, five minutes later, you're in, you're angry about this relationship or you're feeling sad about that. So it just, the, while there's still um, a charge in those thoughts, while there's still, you know, energy in those thoughts and those feelings, uh, the, it tends to, they will keep pulling you out of the infinite state. So in a, you know, a positive way to see it is you have to clear that until those no longer exist, whatever the thoughts are that keep pulling you out. Those are the thoughts that are, have special meaning, addictive, uh, addictiveness to you. So you, have, you can either keep observing or cancelling or praying or allowing the feeling out or uh, any spiritual practice until they disappear, until it no longer exists. So once you, that's called transcendence. Once you transcend a thought, to fully transcend a thought or a feeling means it will never, ever come back again. You've learned the lesson. You know, there, there's nothing there for you. Like if I'm addicted to the latest iPhone, for me to transcend that would mean it becomes so meaningless that it would not exist for me. I'd walk the whole day and not even notice iPhones in the world because it's been transcended. It, it doesn't exist. There's not, nothing left for me for my ego to try and hook on to anything to do with iPhones or the body or the world or whatever. If a world is existing, there's some there's some um, payoff. Uh, that's very advanced. The, 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 we're getting to very advanced levels to be in the freedom all the time. Uh, that's very advanced. So wh why does it's the, it's the payoff of being the experiencer of wanting to experience, um, wanting to experience the world at a very subtle level of duality. Um, so if, if you let that go, uh, what if you surrender? I, I get a payoff of just seeing colors and seeing experiences. So what if there was no payoff there? So then uh, that that's another clearing. So there'd be no payoff in wanting to be wanting to be in the world as the ultimate state. So you're okay whether the world exists or doesn't exist. Um, so that's, that's about, but 
uh, if you're suffering like relationships or thoughts or suffering feelings or the body, then those are the ones you you clear. That's very advanced. Um, the world would not even exist if if there was no payoff of the world. You surrendered the world completely to God. Uh, let you let go of your attachment to uh, yourself as an experiencer in the world. Then that will probably let go of some positionality and addiction uh, that um, there's going to be something that survives um, and that enjoys the world uh, so you let go of that um, the quality duality that 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 idea and um, my experience is beyond the world is the infinite light uh, but um, even to get to bliss or levels of enlightenment in the world is very advanced and good enough um, okay so um, why do you go back well it's, you see, the ego and the world is basically a temptation for you to keep hooking back in. You know, the world will keep showing you uh, things to hook you in, and your ego will keep hooking you in with thoughts and feelings until you transcend them. So you could say that's the whole purpose of your thoughts and your ego and the world, is to see if you is there anything in the world, is there any, any thought in your head that is still holds meaning, still is uh, there's still a payoff there's still something that wants to go back there again and again so you have to see that and then you have to ask yourself are you willing to do the spiritual work to let it go a uh, buddha might say you have an attachment to being in the world you have an attachment to your thoughts you have an attachment to that relative until you're willing to release that attachment um, you'll still suffer you you suffer your attachments that's the funny thing that's why you cry when you lose your favorite whatever it is, person, place, or situation, because you're attached. If you had no attachments, you wouldn't cry if it suddenly left or disappeared. So you're holding ego attachments, um, positionalities. So um, so then, you know, so the commitment, if, you, if you're if getting hooked back into the world, you, I mean, you might go to like a spiritual seminar and be in the infinite silence, and then you walk out into work, and then you feel fear and fear and thoughts and worry and all of this stuff coming on so it's like uh, you can either do the spiritual work in the work you know before the work to just clear that until it's meaningless uh, whichever practice you do counseling beliefs the observer allow the feelings or, or course in miracles prayers you transcend it until actually what would happen is you transcend it every position duality of thought or idea around work you, there'll just be infinite timeless presence occurring in work or you might get an inner calling to leave work because it's not important so those are the things those are the fears and positions that make the ego uh, register you see you only register what's important to your ego once your ego has let go of the importance of that then that disappears from your experience if you're not interested in thoughts you won't you won't experience them any longer not in, uh, interested in your body you won't experience the body you, um i've often i'm often in that what i call the bodiless state being the observer of the body and not being interested in the body you're not aware of that you have a body uh and um and then you know the harder one to do is let go of the addiction to thoughts uh the payoff of just being in the head all the time um even though it can be very nice if you're practicing gratitude it can be very nice to be in the head to be grateful for everything or to practice forgiveness or to practice unconditional love show great spiritual practices so so then uh, the reason you come out and choose the world is because you you have to get both conscious and unconscious clarity that that you're holding a position around work around money around relationships then you have to gain clarity on what are the what is the belief the thought the feelings how are you making that person place or situation magical and then be willing to use whichever spiritual practice counseling observer prayer to release that until it no longer shows up until you know it's if i die today if the physical body dies today not important because i'm not the body when that's gone then that's gone you see you're not going to complain about the body dying ever again because that's been that's been transcended so um if you want the eternal stillness all the time or the beingness or the oneness all the time then there has to be that willingness to put everything on the chopping block until nothing else shows up and that presence remains so it's a 
it's a one pointed of one pointedness of mind it's a devotion it's like a burning that's the most important thing you want you can't be like well there's a film on tonight so that's more important than clearing everything on uh, just, but that's at the end you know you're just willing to do whatever it takes to just be there all the time very hard work enlightenment as Hawkins says enlightenment is the highest thing achievement and uh, requires uh, enormous willingness and courage um, to, to get to that state and refine it but uh, uh, for those who have glimpsed the state uh, if you're honest with yourself you probably will say it, it's worth it it's worth it okay